This is the news program back on tour by popular demand. All the headlines tonight have the word dark emphasized beyond belief. Gordon Brown found on the dark side of the moon. Darkness descends to the ground, killing two. And dark, 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 dark. Now bear witness to the radiation that will eventually kill us all. Good evening. I have two pieces of breaking news for you tonight. The first, I've got the sun in my eyes. The second is this. It's been announced tonight that with immediate effect, the number six is moving its position. In a statement, the circle with a curve coming off the top of it said it was facing discrimination between numbers five and seven that it could not cope with any longer. The police have contacted these numbers for a comment, although it's not known to us at this time whether or not they accept those allegations. For the time being, the number six is now taking residence between nine and ten. A move criticised by the British government because they say people will now not know how to draw the number nine. The news program smashing through the proverbial roof. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's time for the weather now. We did invite Jeremy Paxman to present it, but when he contacted him, he ran into the woods. So it's, it's me who's going to have to take his place. Tomorrow will be moderate, the time being 4pm for most of the day, except for 11pm where all weather will happen at once. Otherwise, boredom encroaching for the more slightly, but nothing to worry about. Stale to come tonight! Man brought back to life so he can be executed in America. And Kim John Un goes to live on Jupiter. Eyewitnesses are today reporting that a gun has come to life, grown legs, and is now terrorizing the town of Inverkeeving. The gun is said to come to life after magic powder was thrown at it during a confrontation in which a man holding a, ma a magician at gunpoint threatened to kill him. We're now joined by that magician who wants to remain anonymous, although we'll call him Scott. That's not his real name. Scott, tell us about what happened on that day. Well, I was walking along the fourth road bridge and this man came up to me and he pointed a gun at me and he said give me what you've got in your pockets or I'll shoot you and then I gave him a magic powder and then it spilt all over the gun and it tried to kill us and we're assuming that's where it ran to in Vakiving yes must have well uh, that's not what the man you alleged holding the gun was saying to us earlier today, he gave us a statement when we told him we were running a story like this. He said that you were the one carrying the gun, then when he asked you for a lighter for a cigarette, you pulled the gun out, threatened him with that gun, poured the magic powder onto the gun to make yourself look powerful. What do you have to say to that? That's not true, eh? Why would that not be true? It's just no, eh? Well, to make sure you were telling the truth, we did a lie detector on you. We want to make sure that your side of the story is, in fact, correct. We have the results here. Are you ready for them? Yes. Well, here we go. We asked you this question. Were you confronted with a gun at the fourth row bridge on Tuesday afternoon? You said yes, you were. This test indicates you were being deceptive. I wasn't. Were you not? You liar. We asked you then, did you carry the gun in question? You said no. Well, to put it in layman's terms, you lied there as well. No, I didn't. Oh, you scumbag. Ah, you silly scumbag. One more question. Did you apply the magic powder to the gun? You said no, you didn't. Well, you lied in every question. How dare you? How dare you? dare you come on this program, try to push the blame on someone else. You were carrying that concealed weapon, you should be arrested and put in jail for that. What do you have to say in your defence? I'm not a liar. You cheating, lying scumbag. I'll have the police on you tonight. Thank you very much. Warning, this program contains serious doses of news. And for the sports, we've got our guest presenter Jules McSqueak. What have you got for us today, Jules? Thanks, 
Jed. The cycling time trials in Glasgow yesterday were interesting after the winner, Scotsman Chris Hawkins, was arrested by police for traffic offences, which police Scotland say are connected to the time trial itself. Some of the charges brought against them are said to be dangerous driving and driving above the speed limit. If convicted, he can lose his driving licence for up to two years. He won his time trial at a time of 48 minutes and 7 seconds behind second place Bradley Wiggins. Here's some more sports results for football in League 2. Stencastle Fields 2, Range Rover 1, Rongers 0, Dunfermline Gymnastics 6. And in England's Championship League, Tottenham Gunshot 2, Newcastle Separates 2. The Yoke Cumberbatch match couldn't be started because of a volcanic eruption on the pitch that you may have heard about earlier on the news. Back to you, Jez. When your friends can't help you, we can. Animal rights officials have condemned the actions of a man who killed a rat. The vermin usually live underground and are quite small, but this man says evasive action was required after a giant rat weighing six stone and measuring 80 centimetres in height was found in a residential area in Leeds. Animal rights advocates had tested the rat for various diseases after rumours it was ridden with the bubonic plague. The news programme, still more believable than the BBC. The newspaper headlines tomorrow are indistinguishable because the ink has come to life and made special artistic patterns instead. Surely these are the best headlines the world has ever seen. Well that's all for me tonight, but until I go, I have to wait for this cool word to be uttered in my ear. Okay, good night.